from your local election headquarters. This is Big Country Politics on KTAB. Well, welcome back. The 86th Texas Legislature has just passed the halfway mark and Representative Stan Lambert was crisscrossing the big country in the last two weeks, giving people uh, in the area a halfway point legislative update. We caught up to him here in Abilene at one of his stops. Here's what Representative Lambert had to say. Uh, school finance, property tax reform, uh, mental health issues, uh, disaster recovery, uh, school safety, uh, all of these, of course, uh, were, were happening or a couple of things happening during the course of the interim uh, in between the time of the 85th legislature uh, adjourned and, and then before the start of this 86th. Uh, we know we had Hurricane Harvey, uh, which was devastating to uh, our Texas, Texas coastal communities, and then we had uh, the unfortunate tragedy at Santa Fe High School uh, uh, with the shooting and the, uh, the situation there. So. Those were kind of the things that led into this session. A lot, of, uh, a lot of interim committees were put to work to start working on things like school safety. Uh, the governor had many roundtable discussions, as you recall. Uh, there were other things that uh, some special committees were appointed to, to, to work on. So uh, when we came together in January, we knew that those, those were some of the two or three or four or five primary issues that we would be dealing with and would be asked to address. Now, interesting thing, as you know, about the, the state legislature is that nothing really can be passed in the first 60 days unless it is an emergency item uh, as identified by the governor. And so really all the emergency items that really he was headlining, property tax reform, school finance reform, uh, these issues have started and we've actually even uh, gotten a couple of those bills out of committees and we'll talk about those in just a moment. But uh, this week we passed uh, House Bill 1. Uh, that was our, our major budget, uh, which is a significant budget. We also passed uh, a supplemental. I call it the catch-up, the Heinz bill, uh, because it's a catch-up bill on the existing two-year biennium as far as some of those expenses that are kind of, you know, crop up during the interim that uh, we didn't really address uh, two years ago in the, in the 85th legislature. And so we approved SB 500 uh, on Wednesday, and that was a Senate bill that had already been approved. And so the House bill basically then uh, voted to accept that. So really we just need the governor to sign off on that. The significance of that was that we spent about $6 billion in the supplemental just to finish up this budget, but that does include some things like Hurricane Harvey recovery, it includes uh, some things for school safety, it includes uh, some things related to uh, county road construction, which is really important, I think, uh, in our rural areas of Texas. We've got a lot of roads, as you know, out in the Permian Basin and some of the oil and gas uh, activity, uh, heavily traffic, trafficked areas that need a lot of help. So there's about a quarter of a billion dollars that's going to go into county road uh, reconstruction and, and helping in those areas. So some things that were you would kind of consider one-time expense items. Uh, also TRS uh, received a, a large infusion of a little over a billion dollars and this is going to give our retired educators around the state uh, what's called a 13th check. Uh, a lot of teachers would have liked a cost of living adjustment because as you know and we all know that's really more permanent than just a 13th check which is a one-time uh, infusion but uh, I know that uh, I know my wife's pretty happy about it. She's already talked about how she's going to spend it, and uh, that 680 million dollars is going to go into the Texas economy whenever, uh, whenever we get the governor's approval, and then uh, and then figure out with TRS when, uh, how they can get it all, you know, orchestrated and uh, administered. So uh, that was another big infusion there. But this week we worked on House Bill One, and that that includes uh, some significant uh, additions to school finance, about nine billion dollars of additional funding over and above growth uh, that will be added to uh, school districts around the state. Uh, that also includes about 2.7 billion dollars of tax relief, and so. Most of us know that you really can't do school finance uh, or you can't really do property tax relief unless you can do something about school district because as you know about 55 to 58 percent of our tax bill is really going to our local school districts to fund education locally. And as the state has decreased funding over the last several years our percentage of investment which was used to be about 50 percent has now come down to around 37, 38 percent. And where has that been made up? Well, it's been made up in our property tax uh, bills and statements that we receive once a year. And when we come back, we'll hear the second half of Representative Lambert's legislative update. 
We'll be right back. <laughs> 